Hello and welcome to Iceland. Okay, so we're clearly in the studio, but we were just in Iceland a few moments ago. Over this video, I'm going to go through a variety of wedding photos as well as landscape photos from the trip. And today's video is sponsored by DxO, the makers of Nick Collection 8. Stay tuned to the end for an exclusive discount code, or I guess it's already in the description if you wanna click it. A little relevant history. So I started using Photoshop when I was 11 years old. Over time, I've seen Photoshop evolve through many different versions and Nick Collection was always part of that history. Nick bridged gaps for us as photographers that Photoshop just wasn't doing yet. Since then, DxO has taken over and revitalized the collection with newer versions like Nick 8, which we're here to talk about today. Since that early start in Photoshop, I've gone on to photograph over 1,000 weddings, lots of landscape and street and documentary photography, a lot of which can be seen here on the channel. In Nick 8, there's a redesign Designed Photoshop panel, new masking functionality, and significant improvements to color effects and silver effects. We can also now import masks directly from Photoshop into any of the plugins, making full use of Photoshop's powerful selection tools. Overall, it's just a smarter and more flexible return to Photoshop. You can use Nick Collection 8 in Lightroom or in Photoshop. For today's demo, I'm going to be primarily using it in Photoshop, but I'm going to show you silver effects from Lightroom. Nick Collection 8 is a suite of seven plugins each of which has its own unique tools, filters, and presets. In basics, here is what each plugin is for. Color effects is a general go-to when you want to work with rich cinematic colors with over 50 filters. Some you've probably seen before, some you haven't. It's like having all the tools you need, but also some additional inspiration along the way. You can apply a preset for an instant look, then tweak sliders for brightness, contrast, saturation, or use local controls to target parts of the image. For wedding photos, we have a few options depending on what you're after. You can do classic portrait, which adds a nice softening to skin and makes people look just a little bit better than real life. Classic portrait with warm glow is a little bit more aligned maybe to my preferences. Soft landscape, warm sunset, and there are a lot more. You can customize everything on the side panel and export it to TIFF to retain full quality. You can also combine filters. I might stack a warming filter with soft glow and a detail boost. And the program is fast, it updates in real time so you see what you're working on immediately. In practice, I usually just start with a preset that is pretty close to what I want and then adjust the intensity and fine tune from there. The idea is to refine a photo to a point that feels polished and vibrant without losing the natural look. I'm never really overriding a scene completely. If there's no sunset, I'm not gonna use warm sunset, but if there is a sunset, I, I'm gonna use that. You can also apply your favorite presets from the Photoshop panel over here or use your last edits. So it launches in the plugin with a near final edit. Next up, analog effects. I am a big fan of all the borders available. And even if I am shooting film, I'm usually straightening images uh, and then that makes the border sideways or completely disappear. And it's very nice to be able to just add it right back since I like the look a lot. There are also presets that look really nice, classic camera one and the double exposures. I enjoy film photography for the element of randomness and these presets give me some of that back, which is really nice. There are also some really nice motion blurs, vintage cameras and wet plate emulations. And as always, you can go to the settings and customize it out. Visa. Instead of layers of masks, you simply place these control points. For instance, on a portrait, you drop a point with a face to just brighten the skin. It's super intuitive and it's great for quick tweaks to local colors or light. I also absolutely love how your controls appear here over top of whatever you're working on that way. It doesn't cover up the image, but you also don't have to mouse all the way over to the panel on the right hand side. Next up, we have HDR effects and this is HDR merging. I feel like HDR has maybe gotten a bit of a bad reputation because we've really kind of overdone it. Here I'm talking about classy HDR that you don't even realize is HDR for landscapes with really bright skies and dark foregrounds. HDR effects can either merge multiple bracketed shots, but it also has single image HDR mode. The sliders let you control tone mapping so it doesn't look overcooked. You get a balanced image with details in both the sky and the land. Next up we have Define. It is noise reduction and you can either apply it to the entire scene or just target specific areas like noisy shadows. It's especially helpful for dark environments or if you accidentally let your ISO get too high during a wedding day. Sharpener, input and output sharpening, raw pre-sharpen and output sharpen optimized for print or for screen. It's subtle, but it helps make my images look crisp without halos or artifacts. Now into my favorite plugin in Nick Collection 8. It is Silver FX. It is widely regarded as the gold standard for black and white conversion, and it includes dozens of film simulations like Kodak Tri-X, Ilford HP5. Look at all these stocks available. It comes with the grain pattern as well as the tone curve. Tri-X is one of my favorite films, so we're gonna select that. In the basic adjustments, the structure slider is great for sharpening details without changing the whole image. In landscape Silver FX can really help you create a mood. I might decrease this dynamic brightness under basic adjustments. And once you have something that you really like, you can save it as a preset. 
You also have graduated filters and local adjustments so I can brighten just the sky or darken the foreground selectively if needed. It's a very powerful black and white conversion tool. Each plugin is loaded with presets and sliders, but it also allows fine controls. You can stack filters, save all your own presets, and even share them. I think overall, it's important to keep images looking and feeling true to life. I never want an edit to change an image to something completely different. Not only is this important in my editing, but also when I'm lighting a scene, if I do have to light a scene. Well, it's always fun to go into a wedding venue and set up a bunch of lights and off-camera flashes. There's a pretty good chance that your couple spent some serious time deciding on the look of the wedding and the feel that they wanted for the event, and I want to make my images as true to that as possible. I also like the fact that Nick 8 is pretty chill when it comes to AI. Nick Collection 8 does use smart technology behind the scenes, but it is not about replacing you as the artist. Instead, the AI in Nick is subtle and helpful. For example, version 8 integrates with Photoshop masks. So if you've used Photoshop's select subject or any selection tool, you can pull those masks from Photoshop directly into Nick. So basically you're using Adobe's AI as a helper, and then Nick picks up that mask and you can apply filters exactly where you want. Nick 8 also has new color and luminance masks, letting you target a selective range for colors and brightness. These are great tools, but again, they don't make the artistic decisions for you. They just give you the power to apply adjustments precisely. In short, Nick 8 isn't about some AI bot editing your photos for you. It's about giving you smarter brushes and controls so you can work faster, more creatively, and your voice and vision will always come first. Now, let's do a full quick demo in Silver Effects. I did a brief one there. We're gonna launch this from Lightroom rather than Photoshop. And you might be saying, hey, I can make black and white images in Lightroom. And yes, you're right. Where Silver Effects comes in is it gives you a lot more control over specific aspects of your black and white images and it allows you to tweak them. Before we even get into Silver Effects, it's important that we start with a raw file that is in the best possible state for black and white conversion. That might mean enabling profile corrections in Lightroom, depending on your lens. And depending on the image, I like to get the data out of the deep shadows and the bright highlights and the histogram. So that might mean modifying the black point or shadows and highlights. I am not trying to make this look like a final color image. I just want to have as much data in there. And if I'm spreading that out across the histogram, it's going to be easier to edit in Silver FX. Now you right click the image, TIFF, and here we are, the histogram. The histogram in Silver Effects is really cool. It's a zone system, so you can select multiple zones and it'll show you what you're selecting. And I think this is really useful if you're really dedicated to perfecting your black and white photos. And kind of in a sense, you're, you're using some darkroom tools again, which I feel like connects you to the history of photography. I believe that the zone system originally came up from Ansel Adams. That was a little while before Nick Collection 8. I personally like to start with color filters in the film days, or I guess we still do film photography over on the other channel. Uh, you'd have physical filters. Some digital cameras will allow you to shoot with a color filter when you're doing black and white JPEGs, but Silver FX is nice because you're not locked into those decisions in the moment and you can refine your image in post. You can also customize the color filters to be more specific if you wanna make something really specific that doesn't even really exist in real life filters. After I'm happy with that, I go into my film types. Today we are going to go with Tri-X 400 it's very possible to get into a bit of decision paralysis here since they're all so good. And now that I've chosen a film emulation, I will get the grain from that film stock. I can customize it if I want. And in comparison to Lightroom, the film grain that you're getting in Silver FX is way better in my opinion. Down here, your colors do get modified a little bit. It's not like you're adding a filter to the full image, but you are selecting uh, the blue tones and making them look a little bit different. Then your film style also affects the tone curve here. And it's kind of great because you can just move this tone curve as a whole where in Lightroom, I believe you just have to move point by point. It's a bit annoying. This, you can just grab it as the whole thing. And I think that's pretty awesome. Now we get into tone adjustments. I think that this is a much simpler way to do adjustments. Dynamic brightness is probably the most useful slider here. It affects the image in a smart and natural way. For contrast, you also have a soft contrast option, and I like that a lot. I'm typically just using that. For structure, you can control what tones to affect. Shadows, highlights, I like to add a little bit of structure to my shadows, but I like to leave the highlight area alone. Now coming down into tonality protection, uh, it's something really interesting. It more or less protects your highlights and shadows from under or overexposing. I think it's super useful. Then we get into selective local adjustments. I find that I use a lot of graduated filters and those kind of blend the best for me, but there are lots of options here. Again, I also love these pop-up controls that are right over the area that I'm trying to edit. Now down here, we are going into finishing adjustments. You get some options like vignettes and lens fall offs and the ability to burn your edges, make them darker in different ways and image borders, which again, I feel like might be cheesy, but I'm a big fan of. Overall, I think there's something really special here with silver effects. If you are deep into black and white photography, this is going to be for you. 
Uh, the pricing model of Knit Collection 8 is also really nice that you can just get it as a one-time buy or, or buy it over a few months of the payment plan, but you're not gonna be locking yourself into another subscription ongoing for the rest of your lifetime. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in giving Knit Collection 8 a try, there is a link to my promo code in the description. I'll keep it updated, so even if you're watching this a month or two years after I post the video, you'll still be getting the best deal. Thanks again for DxO for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you again next time.